Question 1. Which of the following best describes a stakeholder in a project? A. An individual who manages project resources. B. An entity that funds the project. C. Any person or group affected by the project. D. A project team member responsible for quality control. Correct answer. C. Any person or group affected by the project. Explanation. Stakeholders in a project can be individuals, groups, or organizations that have an interest in the project's outcome or are impacted by its activities, decisions, or results. Question 2. During which phase of the project life cycle is the project scope typically defined and documented? A. Initiating. B. Planning. C. Executing. D. Monitoring and controlling. Correct answer. B. Planning. Explanation. In the planning phase of the project life cycle, the project scope is defined, documented, and finalized through activities like creating a scope statement, WBS, work breakdown structure, and detailed project plans. Question 3. Emily is managing a project and has identified a significant risk related to resource availability. What project management process should Emily perform next to address this risk? A. Scope validation. B. Quality assurance. C. Risk response planning. D. Change control. Correct answer. C. Risk response planning. Explanation. After identifying a project risk, the next step is to develop risk response strategies in the risk response planning process. This involves determining how to mitigate, avoid, transfer, or accept the identified risks. Question 4. Which of the following documents is used to formally authorize a project? A. Project Charter. B. Stakeholder Register. C. Risk Management Plan. D. Change Log. Correct answer. A. Project Charter. Explanation. The project charter is a document that formally authorizes the existence of a project, providing the project manager with the authority to apply organizational resources to project activities. Question 5. What is the primary purpose of a stakeholder register in project management? A. To identify stakeholders' influence on project outcomes. B. To list stakeholders' contact information. C. To document how stakeholders will be managed throughout the project. D. To assign responsibilities to stakeholders. Correct answer. A. To identify stakeholders' influence on project outcomes. Explanation. The stakeholder register is used to identify stakeholders, document their interests, expectations, and influence on the project, and establish appropriate management strategies. Question 6. David is the project manager for a software development project. During the executing phase, he notices that team members are not adhering to the quality standards defined in the project plan. What should David do next? A. Request additional funding for quality assurance. B. Revise the project schedule to allocate more time for quality control. C. Conduct training sessions to educate team members on quality requirements. D. Implement corrective actions to address the quality issues. Correct answer. D. Implement corrective actions to address the quality issues. Explanation. When deviations from the project plan are observed during execution, project managers should implement corrective actions to bring the project back on track and ensure adherence to quality standards. Question 7. What is the purpose of a change control board, CCB, in project management? A. To manage project risks. B. To review and approve or reject change requests. C. To oversee project communications. D. To resolve conflicts among project team members. Correct answer. B. 
to review and approve or reject change requests. Explanation. A Change Control Board, CCB, is responsible for reviewing, evaluating, and approving or rejecting change requests to ensure that changes do not negatively impact project objectives. Question 8. Which document outlines the detailed breakdown of project deliverables and work packages? A. Project Charter. B. Stakeholder Register. C. Work Breakdown Structure, WBS. D. Communications Management Plan. Correct answer. C. Work Breakdown Structure, WBS. Explanation. The Work Breakdown Structure, WBS, is a hierarchical decomposition of project deliverables into smaller, manageable components called work packages. Question 9. What is the purpose of a risk management plan in project management? A. To identify project stakeholders. B. To document project objectives. C. To define how project risks will be managed and controlled. D. To allocate project resources. Correct answer. C. To define how project risks will be managed and controlled. Explanation. A risk management plan defines how project risks will be identified, analyzed, evaluated, monitored, and controlled throughout the project lifecycle. Question 10. Sarah is a project manager facing challenges with team members working remotely. Which project management process should Sarah focus on to improve team collaboration? A. Quality control. B. Procurement management. C. Team development. D. Risk management. Correct answer. C. Team development. Explanation. Team development processes focus on improving team dynamics, collaboration, and performance, which is crucial when managing remote or distributed project teams. Question 11. What is the purpose of a communication management plan in project management? A. To allocate project resources. B. To define how project communications will be planned, executed, and controlled. C. To assess project risks. D. To monitor project progress. Correct answer. B. To define how project communications will be planned, executed, and controlled. Explanation. A communication management plan defines the approach and methods for project communications, ensuring that the right information is provided to the right stakeholders at the right time. Question 12. Which project management process involves identifying, analyzing, and prioritizing risks? A. Risk response planning. B. Risk monitoring and control. C. Risk identification. D. Risk assessment. Correct answer. C. Risk identification. Explanation. Risk identification is the process of identifying, analyzing, and documenting project risks that could impact the achievement of project objectives. Question 13. During which phase of the project lifecycle are project objectives established and documented? A. Initiating. B. Planning. C. Executing. D. Closing. Correct answer. A. Initiating. Explanation. Project objectives are established and documented during the initiating phase of the project lifecycle, where the project's purpose, scope, and high-level requirements are defined. Question 14. Which project management document describes how changes to the project scope will be managed and controlled? A. Project Charter. B. Change Log. C. Change Management Plan. D. Risk Management Plan. Correct answer. C. Change Management Plan. Explanation. The Change Management Plan describes how changes to the project scope, schedule, and budget will be managed, evaluated, and approved or rejected. Question 15. During the execution phase of a construction project, 
unexpected weather conditions cause delays. What project management process should the project manager focus on to address these delays? A. Quality assurance. B. Schedule control. C. Procurement management. D. Stakeholder engagement. Correct answer. B. Schedule control. Explanation. Schedule control involves monitoring and controlling project schedule performance, addressing variances, and taking corrective actions to manage delays and ensure project milestones are met. Question 16. Which project management process involves defining and documenting the project's overall scope, objectives, and deliverables? A. Project initiation. B. Project planning. C. Project execution. D. Project closure. Correct answer. B. Project planning. Explanation. Project planning involves defining and documenting the project's scope, objectives, deliverables, and the approach for achieving project goals. Question 17. What is the purpose of a lessons learned document in project management? A. To evaluate project team performance. B. To document project risks. C. To provide historical information for future projects. D. To identify project stakeholders. Correct answer. C. To provide historical information for future projects. Explanation. A lessons learned document captures project experiences, successes, failures, and best practices to provide valuable insights for future projects. Question 18. Which project management process involves obtaining formal acceptance of project deliverables from stakeholders? A. Quality assurance. B. Scope verification. C. Risk monitoring. D. Issue management. Correct answer. B. Scope verification. Explanation. Scope verification involves obtaining formal acceptance of project deliverables from stakeholders to confirm that they meet the agreed upon acceptance criteria. Question 19. Which process involves defining the project's scope and obtaining stakeholders' formal approval? A. Develop project charter. B. Monitor and control project work. C. Perform integrated change control. D. Close project or phase. Correct answer. A. Develop project charter. Explanation. The develop project charter process is where the project charter is created, which formally authorizes the project and provides the project manager with the authority to apply organizational resources to project activities. Question 20. During which process does the project manager oversee project execution, manage resources, and address issues? A. Monitor and control project work. B. Direct and manage project work. C. Perform integrated change control. D. Plan scope management. Correct answer. B. Direct and manage project work. Explanation. Direct and manage project work involves leading and performing the work defined in the project management plan and managing the project team's performance. Question 21. What process involves tracking project performance, reviewing progress, and initiating changes as necessary? A. Perform integrated change control. B. Plan scope management. C. Monitor and control project work. D. Develop project charter. Correct answer. C. Monitor and control project work. Explanation. Monitoring and controlling project work involves measuring project performance, identifying variances, and taking corrective actions to ensure project objectives are achieved. Question 22. What is the primary purpose of developing a project management plan? A to authorize the project. B. To define the project scope. C. To guide project execution and control. 
D. To close the project. Correct answer. C. To guide project execution and control. Explanation. The project management plan is a formal document that defines how the project will be executed, monitored, controlled, and closed. It guides the project team in executing and managing the project work. Question 23. During which process is the detailed project scope documented, including project deliverables and acceptance criteria? A. Develop project charter. B. Plan scope management. C. Define scope. D. Validate scope. Correct answer. C. Define scope. Explanation. The defined scope process involves developing a detailed description of the project scope, including deliverables, acceptance criteria, and boundaries. Question 24. What is a key activity in the close project or phase process? A. Documenting lessons learned. B. Developing the project charter. C. Defining project scope. D. Collecting requirements. Correct answer. A. Documenting lessons learned. Explanation. Lessons learned documentation is a critical activity in closing a project or project phase to capture insights for future projects. Question 25. Which process involves ensuring that requested changes are analyzed, approved, or rejected? A. Perform integrated change control. B. Monitor and control project work. C. Direct and manage project work. D. Plan scope management. Correct answer. A. Perform integrated change control. Explanation. The perform integrated change control process evaluates change requests to determine their impact on the project and decides whether to approve or reject them. Question 26. What is a key output of the monitor and control project work process? A. Project Charter. B. Work Breakdown Structure, WBS. C. Performance Reports. D. Risk Management Plan. Correct answer. C. Performance Reports. Explanation. Performance reports are key outputs of the monitor and control project work process providing information on project progress and performance. Question 27. Which process involves identifying, analyzing, and documenting stakeholders' needs and expectations? A. Plan scope management. B. Collect requirements. C. Develop project charter. D. Close project or phase. Correct answer. B. Collect requirements. Explanation. Collecting requirements involves gathering and documenting stakeholders' needs and expectations to define project scope. Question 28. What is the purpose of the develop project charter process? A. To define project deliverables. B. To develop the project management plan. C. To formally authorize the project. D to manage project resources. Correct answer. C. To formally authorize the project. Explanation. The developed project charter process formally recognizes the existence of a project and authorizes the project manager to use organizational resources for project activities. Question 29. Which process involves confirming that project deliverables meet acceptance criteria? A. Validate scope. B. Control scope. C. Plan scope management. D. Perform integrated change control. Correct answer. A. Validate scope. Explanation. The validate scope process involves formalizing acceptance of completed project deliverables based on defined acceptance criteria. Question 30. What is the purpose of the close project or phase process? A. To develop project deliverables. B. 
to authorize project closure. C. To manage project resources. D. To define project scope. Correct answer. B. To authorize project closure. Explanation. The close project or phase process involves finalizing all project activities and officially closing the project or project phase. Question 31. During which process is the project work executed and completed? A. Develop project charter. B. Direct and manage project work. C. Monitor and control project work. D. Perform integrated change control. Correct answer. B. Direct and manage project work. Explanation. Direct and manage project work involves executing and completing project work as per the project management plan. Question 32. What is a key input to the develop project charter process? A. Stakeholder register. B. Project management plan. C. Organizational process assets. D. Requirements documentation. Correct answer. C. Organizational process assets. Explanation. Organizational process assets provide valuable information and guidelines for developing the project charter. Question 33. Which process involves tracking, reviewing, and reporting overall project progress to meet project objectives? A. Plan scope management. B. Control scope. C. Monitor and control project work. D. Perform integrated change control. Correct answer. C. Monitor and control project work. Explanation. Monitoring and control project work involves tracking project performance and taking corrective actions to ensure project objectives are met. Question 34. What document is created as an output of the plan scope management process? A. Project management plan. B. Requirements documentation. C. Scope statement. D. Scope management plan. Correct answer. D. Scope management plan. Explanation. The scope management plan is an output of the plan scope management process, defining how scope will be defined, validated, and controlled. Question 35. Which process involves reviewing and approving project changes to ensure they align with project objectives? A. Plan scope management. B. Collect requirements. C. Perform integrated change control. D. Validate scope. Correct answer. C. Perform integrated change control. Explanation. Performing integrated change control ensures that all project changes are assessed for their impact and aligned with project objectives before approval. Question 36. What is a key benefit of the control scope process? A. Identifying project stakeholders. B. Documenting project risks. C. Defining project deliverables. D. Preventing uncontrolled changes to project scope. Correct answer. D. Preventing uncontrolled changes to project scope. Explanation. Control scope helps prevent unauthorized changes to project scope, ensuring that project deliverables remain within agreed upon boundaries. Question 37. Mr. Thompson, a project manager, is working on a new software development project. During the project planning phase, he needs to define the scope of the project. Which of the following activities would be most appropriate for Mr. Thompson to perform? A. Identifying project stakeholders 0. B. Creating a work breakdown structure, WBS. C. Estimating project costs. D. Writing project status reports. Correct answer. B. Creating a work breakdown structure, WBS. Explanation. 
Defining the scope of a project involves breaking down the project deliverables into smaller, manageable components. The Work Breakdown Structure, WBS, is a hierarchical decomposition of the project scope into work packages that are easier to understand, manage, and estimate. By creating a WBS, Mr. Thompson will be able to establish a clear scope baseline and define the project's deliverables. This aligns with the plan scope management process, which includes defining the scope management plan and scope statement. Question 38. Ms. Rodriguez is managing a construction project and needs to ensure that the work being performed meets the project's scope. Which process would she use to formally accept the completed deliverables? A. Validate scope. B. Plan scope management. C. Define scope. D. Control scope. Correct answer. A. Validate scope. Explanation. The validate scope process involves formalizing acceptance of the completed project deliverables. Ms. Rodriguez should use this process to ensure that the deliverables satisfy the acceptance criteria defined during the project planning phase. This process is crucial for confirming that the project work is complete and meets the customer's expectations. Validation of scope helps in managing stakeholder expectations and ensuring project success. Question 39. Scenario. Mr. Anderson is managing a marketing campaign project. He encounters a situation where stakeholders request additional features that were not originally part of the project scope. How should Mr. Anderson handle this situation? A. Incorporate the new features to meet stakeholder expectations. B. Assess the impact of the changes on project constraints and objectives. C. Ignore the stakeholder requests to maintain project scope. D. Delegate the decision to the project team. Correct answer. B. Assess the impact of the changes on project constraints and objectives. Explanation. In project management, scope changes must be evaluated for their impact on project constraints such as cost, schedule, and resources. Mr. Anderson should assess how incorporating the new features would affect the project's overall objectives and constraints. This involves analyzing potential risks, costs, and timeline adjustments associated with the changes. Understanding the impact is essential for making informed decisions and maintaining project alignment with the defined scope. Question 40. During the project initiation phase, what is the primary purpose of the plan scope management process? A. To define and document project scope. B. To establish procedures for scope change control. C. To create a detailed project schedule. D. To identify project stakeholders. Correct answer. B. To establish procedures for scope change control. Explanation. The plan scope management process involves defining how project scope will be defined, validated, and controlled throughout the project lifecycle. Establishing procedures for scope change control is essential to manage changes effectively, ensuring that only approved changes are implemented to prevent scope creep and maintain project focus. Question 41. Which tool or technique is commonly used to collect requirements during the collect requirements process? A. Expert judgment. B. Risk register. C. Earned value analysis. D. Project schedule. Correct answer. A. Expert judgment. Explanation. Expert judgment involves consulting with individuals or groups who have specialized knowledge or experience relevant to the project requirements. This technique helps ensure that all necessary requirements are identified effectively leveraging the insights of subject matter experts to gather comprehensive project requirements. Question 42. Scenario. Ms. Parker is finalizing the project scope statement. What should she include in this document? A. Detailed breakdown of project costs. B. List of identified risks and their responses. C. Project objectives, deliverables, and acceptance criteria. D. Communication plan for stakeholders. 
Correct answer. C. Project objectives, deliverables, and acceptance criteria. Explanation. The project scope statement defines the project's objectives, deliverables, and acceptance criteria. It provides a clear understanding of what is included and excluded from the project scope, serving as a reference point for project planning and execution. Question 43. Which process involves subdividing project deliverables and project work into smaller, more manageable components? A. Collect requirements. B. Control scope. C. Create work breakdown structure, WBS. D. Validate scope. Correct answer. C. Create work breakdown structure, WBS. Explanation. The Create Work Breakdown Structure WBS, process involves breaking down project deliverables and work into smaller, manageable components. This hierarchical decomposition facilitates better understanding, organization, and estimation of project tasks and activities. Question 44. Which process involves monitoring the status of project scope and managing changes to the scope baseline? A. Define scope. B. Validate scope. C. Control scope. D. Plan scope management. Correct answer. C. Control scope. Explanation. The control scope process involves monitoring the project scope status and managing changes to the scope baseline. It ensures that project scope remains aligned with the agreed upon requirements and objectives throughout the project lifecycle. Question 45. Scenario. Mr. Carter is managing a construction project and notices that additional features requested by stakeholders are outside the project scope. What should Mr. Carter do next? A. Incorporate the additional features to enhance project deliverables. B. Document the requested changes and assess their impact on project constraints. C. Ignore the stakeholder requests to avoid scope creep. D. Delegate the decision to the project sponsor. Correct answer. B. Document the requested changes and assess their impact on project constraints. Explanation. When faced with scope change requests, it's important to document them and assess their impact on project constraints such as cost, schedule, and quality. This analysis helps in making informed decisions about whether to incorporate the changes or not. Question 46. Which process involves formalizing acceptance of completed project deliverables? A. Plan scope management. B. Validate scope. C. Define scope. D. Control scope. Correct answer. B. Validate scope. Explanation. The validate scope process involves formalizing acceptance of completed project deliverables. It ensures that the deliverables meet the acceptance criteria specified in the project scope statement. Question 47. What is the purpose of the defined scope process? A. To identify project stakeholders. B. To establish project objectives. C. To document project assumptions and constraints. D. To develop a detailed description of project deliverables. Correct answer. D. To develop a detailed description of project deliverables. Explanation. The defined scope process involves developing a detailed description of project deliverables, including what is included and excluded from the project scope. This helps in setting clear expectations and understanding project boundaries. Question 48. Which document is used to describe how project scope will be managed and controlled throughout the project lifecycle? A. Project Charter. B. Scope Baseline. C. Scope Management Plan. D. Requirements Traceability Matrix. Correct answer. C. Scope Management Plan. Explanation. The Scope Management Plan describes how project scope will be defined, managed, validated, and controlled. 
It provides guidelines for preventing scope creep and ensuring project success. Question 49. Scenario. Ms. Adams is leading a software development project. What should she do to ensure that project requirements are clearly understood and documented? A. Review the project schedule. B. Conduct regular status meetings with stakeholders. C. Use techniques such as interviews and workshops to collect requirements. D. Delegate requirements documentation to the project team. Correct answer. C. Use techniques such as interviews and workshops to collect requirements. Explanation. Collecting requirements involves engaging stakeholders through techniques such as interviews, workshops, and focus groups to ensure that project requirements are clearly understood and documented. Question 50. Which process involves subdividing project scope and deliverables into smaller, more manageable components? A. Define scope. B. Validate scope. C. Plan scope management. D. Create work breakdown structure, WBS. Correct answer. D. Create work breakdown structure, WBS. Explanation. The create work breakdown structure, WBS, process involves subdividing project scope and deliverables into smaller, more manageable components. This hierarchical decomposition facilitates effective project planning and management. Question 51. During which process does the project manager review deliverables with the customer or sponsor to ensure they are completed satisfactorily? A. Plan scope management. B. Define scope. C. Validate scope. D. Control scope. Correct answer. C. Validate scope. Explanation. The validate scope process involves reviewing completed deliverables with the customer or sponsor to ensure they meet acceptance criteria and are completed satisfactorily. Question 52. Scenario. Ms. Garcia is leading a project to develop a new mobile application. During the project execution phase, some stakeholders request additional features that were not part of the original scope. What should Ms. Garcia do first? A. Immediately incorporate the additional features to satisfy stakeholders. B. Assess the impact of the changes on project constraints and objectives. C. Ignore the stakeholder requests to maintain project scope. D. Seek approval from the project sponsor before considering any changes. Correct answer. B. Assess the impact of the changes on project constraints and objectives. Explanation. When faced with scope change requests, it's essential to assess their impact on project constraints such as schedule, cost, resources, and quality. Ms. Garcia should analyze the implications of incorporating the additional features before making any decisions, ensuring alignment with project objectives and stakeholder expectations. Question 53. Which process involves documenting and managing changes to project scope? A. Plan scope management. B. Validate scope. C. Define scope. D. Control scope. Correct answer. D. Control scope. Explanation. The control scope process involves documenting and managing changes to project scope throughout the project lifecycle. It ensures that project scope remains aligned with defined requirements and objectives preventing unauthorized changes and scope creep. Question 54. During which process does the project team develop a detailed description of project deliverables and their associated requirements? A. Define scope. B. Validate scope. C. Collect requirements. D. Control scope. Correct answer. A. Define scope. Explanation. The defined scope process involves developing a detailed description of project deliverables and their associated requirements. This process clarifies project objectives and sets the foundation for effective project planning and execution. 
Question 55. Scenario. Mr. Wilson is managing a construction project to build a new office complex. During the project planning phase, he needs to determine the order in which project activities should be performed. What process should Mr. Wilson undertake to accomplish this? A. Plan schedule management. B. Define activities. C. Sequence activities. D. Develop schedule. Correct answer. C. Sequence activities. Explanation. In project management, the sequence activities process involves identifying and documenting relationships between project activities to determine the most efficient order of execution. Mr. Wilson should perform this process to establish logical dependencies among activities, ensuring smooth project flow and minimizing delays. Question 56. Which process involves estimating the number of work periods needed to complete individual activities with estimated resources? A. Plan schedule management. B. Develop schedule. C. Define activities. D. Estimate activity durations. Correct answer. D. Estimate activity durations. Explanation. The estimate activity durations process involves estimating the amount of time, work periods, required to complete individual project activities using estimated resources. This process is crucial for developing an accurate project schedule based on resource availability and project constraints. Question 57. During which process does the project team analyze activity sequences, durations, resource requirements, and constraints to create the project schedule? A. Develop schedule. B. Define activities. C. Plan schedule management. D. Control schedule. Correct answer. A. Develop schedule. Explanation. The develop schedule process involves analyzing activity sequences, durations, resource requirements, and constraints to create the project schedule. This process integrates inputs from various project management processes to establish an achievable project timeline. Question 58. Which process involves defining and documenting the specific activities that must be performed to produce the project deliverables? A. Plan schedule management. B. Develop schedule. C. Define activities. D. Sequence activities. Correct answer. C. Define activities. Explanation. The define activities process involves identifying and documenting the specific activities required to produce the project deliverables. This process results in a comprehensive list of project tasks that will be scheduled and executed during project implementation. Question 59. Scenario. Ms. Martinez is managing a software development project. She needs to estimate the time required to complete each project activity. What process should Ms. Martinez undertake? A. Plan schedule management. B. Define activities. C. Estimate activity durations. D. Develop schedule. Correct answer. C. Estimate activity durations. Explanation. To estimate the time required for each project activity, Ms. Martinez should undertake the estimate activity durations process. This involves analyzing historical data, expert judgment, and other relevant information to determine the duration of individual activities. Question 60. Which tool or technique is commonly used to identify logical relationships among project activities? A. Resource leveling. B. Precedence diagramming method, PDM. C. Critical path method, CPM. D. Earned value management, EVM. Correct answer. B. Precedence diagramming method, PDM. Explanation. The precedence diagramming method, PDM, is commonly used to identify and depict logical relationships, dependencies, among project activities. It helps determine the sequence in which activities should be performed to achieve project objectives efficiently. 
Question 61. During which process does the project team determine the start and finish dates for project activities? A. Develop schedule. B. Plan schedule management. C. Control schedule. D. Define activities. Correct answer. A. Develop schedule. Explanation. The develop schedule process involves determining the start and finish dates for project activities based on activity sequences, durations, resource availability, and constraints. This process results in the creation of the project schedule. Question 62. Which process involves analyzing project schedule performance and managing changes as they occur? A. Plan schedule management. B. Define activities. C. Control schedule. D. Sequence activities. Correct answer. C. Control schedule. Explanation. The control schedule process involves monitoring project schedule performance, assessing variance, and managing changes to optimize project performance. This process ensures that the project remains on track to meet its objectives. Question 63. Scenario. Mr. Thompson is managing a construction project and needs to determine the dependencies between project activities. What should Mr. Thompson use to visualize these dependencies? A. Gantt chart. B. Network diagram. C. Resource histogram. D. Risk register. Correct answer. B. Network diagram. Explanation. A network diagram is used to visualize the dependencies between project activities, illustrating the sequence and relationships among tasks. Mr. Thompson can use this diagram to identify critical paths and optimize project scheduling. Question 64. Which technique is used to compress the project schedule without changing the project scope? A. Resource leveling. B. Fast tracking. C. Monte Carlo simulation. D. Trend analysis. Correct answer. B. Fast tracking. Explanation. Fast tracking is a schedule compression technique that involves overlapping activities that would normally be performed in sequence. This technique helps accelerate project completion without compromising project scope. Question 65. During which process does the project team develop the project schedule by analyzing activity sequences, durations, resource requirements, and constraints? A. Develop schedule. B. Define activities. C. Sequence activities. D. Plan schedule management. Correct answer. A. Develop schedule. Explanation. The develop schedule process involves integrating activity sequences, durations, resource requirements, and constraints to create the project schedule. This process requires collaboration and analysis to establish an achievable timeline. Question 66. Which type of dependency requires that one activity must finish before another can start? A. Start to start, SS. B. Finish to start. FS. C. Start to finish. SF. D. Finish to finish. FF. Correct answer. B. Finish to start. FS. Explanation. Finish to start. FS. Dependency means that one activity must finish before another can start. This is the most common type of logical relationship between project activities. Question 67. Scenario. Ms. Lee is managing a marketing campaign project. Some activities in the project have flexibility in their start and finish times. What type of activities does this describe? A. Critical activities. B. Slack activities. C. Lead activities. D. Lag activities. Correct answer. B. Slack activities. Explanation. Slack activities have flexibility in their start and finish times, meaning they can be delayed without impacting the project's critical path. 
These activities have float or slack time. Question 68. Which process involves defining the policies, procedures, and documentation for planning, developing, managing, executing, and controlling the project schedule? A. Control schedule. B. Plan schedule management. C. Develop schedule. D. Define activities. Correct answer. B. Plan schedule management. Explanation. The plan schedule management process involves defining the policies, procedures, and documentation for project schedule management. This process establishes guidelines for effective project scheduling and control. Question 69. Which tool or technique is used to shorten the project duration by adjusting the activities within their float? A. Monte Carlo simulation. B. Critical path method, CPM. C. Resource leveling. D. Trend analysis. Correct answer. C. Resource leveling. Explanation. Resource leveling is a technique used to adjust project activities within their float, slack, to shorten the project duration without affecting the project scope. This technique helps optimize resource utilization and minimize project delays. Question 70. Scenario. Mr. Rodriguez is managing a construction project and needs to determine the shortest possible project duration. Which technique should he use to identify the sequence of activities that will result in the project's shortest overall duration? A. Resource leveling. B. Monte Carlo simulation. C. Critical path method, CPM. D. Fast tracking. Correct answer. C. Critical path method, CPM. Explanation. The critical path method, CPM, is used to identify the sequence of activities that will result in the shortest overall project duration. By determining the critical path, Mr. Rodriguez can focus on activities that directly impact the project timeline. Question 71. Which document provides a graphical representation of the project schedule, showing the start and finish dates of project activities and their dependencies? A. Gantt chart. B. Network diagram. C. Project Charter. D. Work Breakdown Structure, WBS. Correct answer. A. Gantt Chart. Explanation. A Gantt Chart provides a graphical representation of the project schedule, showing the start and finish dates of project activities along with their dependencies. This visualization helps project managers and stakeholders understand the project timeline and progress. Question 72. During which process does the project team estimate the number of work periods needed to complete individual activities with estimated resources? A. Plan schedule management. B. Develop schedule. C. Define activities. D. Estimate activity durations. Correct answer. D. Estimate activity durations. Explanation. The estimate activity durations process involves estimating the number of work periods, time, needed to complete individual project activities using estimated resources. This estimation is critical for developing a realistic project schedule. Question 73. Scenario. Mr. Thompson is managing a construction project to build a new bridge. He needs to estimate the financial resources required for the project. What process should Mr. Thompson undertake to accomplish this? A. Plan cost management. B. Determine budget. C. Estimate costs. D. Control costs. Correct answer. C. Estimate costs. Explanation. The estimate costs process involves estimating the monetary resources required to complete project activities and deliverables. Mr. Thompson should use this process to develop an accurate cost estimate based on project scope, resource requirements, and other factors. Question 74. 
which process involves aggregating the estimated costs of individual activities or work packages to establish an authorized cost baseline. A. Control costs. B. Estimate costs. C. Determine budget. D. Plan cost management. Correct answer. C. Determine budget. Explanation. The determined budget process involves aggregating the estimated costs of individual project activities or work packages to establish an authorized cost baseline. This baseline represents the total plan budget for the project. Question 75. Which tool or technique is commonly used to estimate costs based on historical data, expert judgment, and analogous estimating? A. Parametric estimating. B. Reserve analysis. C. Earned value management, EVM. D. Variance analysis. Correct answer. A. Parametric estimating. Explanation. Parametric estimating is a cost estimation technique that uses historical data, expert judgment, and mathematical algorithms to calculate project costs based on specific parameters. This technique is efficient for estimating costs of similar activities or projects. Question 76. Which process involves establishing policies, procedures, and documentation for managing project costs throughout the project lifecycle? A. Plan cost management. B. Estimate costs. C. Control costs. D. Determine budget. Correct answer. A. Plan cost management. Explanation. The plan cost management process involves establishing policies, procedures, and documentation for managing project costs throughout the project lifecycle. This process defines how costs will be estimated, budgeted, and controlled. Question 77. Scenario. Ms. Parker is managing a software development project. She needs to allocate funds for project activities and resources. What process should Ms. Parker undertake? A. Determine budget. B. Control costs. C. Estimate costs. D. Plan cost management. Correct answer. A. Determine budget. Explanation. The determined budget process involves allocating funds to project activities and resources based on cost estimates. Ms. Parker should use this process to establish a comprehensive project budget aligned with project scope and objectives. Question 78. Which technique is used to assess the potential impact of identified risks on project costs? A. Parametric estimating. B. Reserve analysis. C. Earned Value Management, EVM. D. Monte Carlo Simulation. Correct answer. B. Reserve Analysis. Explanation. Reserve analysis is a technique used to assess the potential impact of identified risks on project costs by allocating contingency reserves. This helps mitigate cost overruns due to unforeseen events. Question 79. During which process does the project team monitor project performance to identify variances from the project cost baseline? A. Determine budget. B. Estimate costs. C. Control costs. D. Plan cost management. Correct answer. C. Control costs. Explanation. The control costs process involves monitoring project performance to identify variances from the project cost baseline. This process helps track actual costs against planned costs and take corrective actions as needed. Question 80. Which tool or technique is used to forecast final project costs based on project performance to date? A. Variance analysis. B. Trend analysis. C. Earned Value Management, EVM. D. Parametric Estimating. Correct answer. C. Earned Value Management, EVM. Explanation. 
Earned Value Management EVM, is used to forecast final project costs based on project performance metrics such as earned value EV, planned value PV, and actual cost AC. EVM helps predict project outcomes and identify cost trends. Question 81. Scenario. Mr. Johnson is managing a construction project and notices that actual costs are higher than planned costs. What should Mr. Johnson do next? A. Adjust the project budget to accommodate cost overruns. B. Conduct variance analysis to identify the root cause of cost overruns. C. Ignore the cost variances to focus on project schedule. D. Reduce project scope to control costs. Correct answer. B. Conduct variance analysis to identify the root cause of cost overruns. Explanation. When facing cost variances, it's important to conduct variance analysis to identify the root cause of cost overruns. This analysis helps in understanding discrepancies and taking corrective actions to bring costs back in line with the budget. Question 82. Which process involves aggregating estimated costs to establish an authorized cost baseline? A. Plan cost management. B. Control costs. C. Estimate costs. D. Determine budget. Correct answer. D. Determine budget. Explanation. The determine budget process involves aggregating estimated costs of project activities to establish an authorized cost baseline. This baseline represents the total planned budget for the project. Question 83. Which type of cost estimate uses historical data and mathematical models to predict project costs based on key project parameters? A. Analogous estimating. B. Parametric estimating. C. Bottom up estimating. D. Three point estimating. Correct answer. B. Parametric estimating. Explanation. Parametric estimating uses historical data and mathematical models to predict project costs based on specific project parameters, e.g., cost per square foot, cost per unit. This technique is efficient for estimating costs of similar activities or projects. Question 84. During which process does the project team estimate the monetary resources required to complete project activities? A. Plan cost management. B. Control costs. C. Estimate costs. D. Determine budget. Correct answer. C. Estimate costs. Explanation. The estimate costs process involves estimating the monetary resources, costs, required to complete project activities based on project scope, resource requirements, and other factors. This estimation is critical for developing an accurate project budget. Question 85. Which cost management technique involves identifying and documenting the specific activities and resources needed to complete project deliverables? A. Reserve analysis. B. Earned value management, EVM. C. Bottom up estimating. D. Define budget. Correct answer. C. Bottom up estimating. Explanation. Bottom-up estimating involves identifying and documenting the specific activities and resources needed to complete project deliverables. This technique provides a detailed cost estimate based on the lowest level of work packages. Question 86. Which technique is used to adjust project resources and activities to optimize the use of available resources while minimizing cost and schedule impacts? A. Reserve analysis. B. Resource leveling. C. Variance analysis. D. Cost aggregation. Correct answer. B. Resource leveling. Explanation. Resource leveling is used to adjust project resources and activities to optimize resource utilization while minimizing cost and schedule impacts. This technique helps balance resource demand and supply to prevent resource overloads. Question 87. 
Scenario. Ms. Adams is managing a marketing campaign project. She wants to ensure that the project remains within the approved budget. What process should Ms. Adams use to monitor and control project costs? A. Plan cost management. B. Control costs. C. Determine budget. D. Estimate costs. Correct answer. B. Control costs. Explanation. The control costs process involves monitoring and controlling project costs to ensure that the project remains within the approved budget. Ms. Adams should use this process to track actual costs, assess cost variances, and implement corrective actions as needed. Question 88. Which cost management process involves comparing actual project performance against the planned performance to identify deviations? A. Determine budget. B. Control costs. C. Estimate costs. D. Plan cost management. Correct answer. B. Control costs. Explanation. The control costs process involves comparing actual project performance, actual costs, against planned performance, planned costs, to identify deviations or variances. This helps project managers assess cost performance and take corrective actions if needed. Question 89. Scenario. Mr. Smith is managing a construction project. He notices that certain project activities have exceeded their budgeted costs. What technique should Mr. Smith use to analyze the root cause of cost overruns? A. Variance analysis. B. Reserve analysis. C. Parametric estimating. D. Earned value management, EVM. Correct answer. A. Variance analysis. Explanation. Variance analysis is used to analyze the root cause of cost overruns by comparing actual costs with planned costs for specific project activities. Mr. Smith should use this technique to identify discrepancies and take corrective actions accordingly. Question 90. Which cost management process involves identifying and documenting the specific project activities required to produce project deliverables? A. Plan cost management. B. Estimate costs. C. Determine budget. D. Control costs. Correct answer. B. Estimate costs. Explanation. The estimate costs process involves identifying and documenting the specific project activities required to produce project deliverables. This process helps develop accurate cost estimates based on resource requirements, activity durations, and other factors. <laughs>